on Kiwi. Ben Young is in. The best ideas are free. BWAGY. Morning, Ben. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Tig. We're um, looking at lessons learned by Warren Buffett and Pixar. Yes. Yes. So Warren Buffett, infamous investor, one of the most successful business people in the world. He's uh, donated or pledged his wealth um, to uh, Goodwill. Yeah. Um, under the Bill Gates Foundation, which is interesting. Goodwill and peace for all men. Yeah. Is but it, it's funny. Um, the vision for the Gates Foundation is to spend money to solve the problems. Yeah. Whereas, uh, which is a little bit different to other foundations, where it's we need to get money to survive for the next two years. Mm. Whereas get, the Gates Foundation are looking at how can we solve this problem? Okay, this is a twenty billion dollar problem. Let's get twenty billion dollars to solve it. Anyway, back to, back to my internal scorecard uh, for Warren Buffett and Pixar. So I was reading um, Harvard Business Review over the weekend, and I was kind of talking about Pixar and its magnificent success. And one of the things that um, the team within Pixar drilled down to was their internal scorecard. And I thought that was quite interesting because Warren Buffett um, believes the same kind of thing. Yeah. In his book, he talks about how everyone should kind of define their internal scorecard, what they will do, what they won't do, and kind of the rules for how they operate their life. And it sounds a little bit anal, but what he says is once you do this, it means you run your life the way you want to yeah. rather than having an outer scorecard where you're always comparing up against people around you. Huh, good idea. So um, he was just going, subtle change in reflecting on yourself rather than reflecting on what the world thinks about you. So, you know, kind of avoiding that, oh, the neighbour's got a nicer car kind yeah. of effect. Um, always but, uh, trying to one-up the Joneses. Yeah, yeah. One-ing out, you know, one-ing out doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so at Pixar, they had something similar. Their rules in the early days were no songs, which is quite interesting, um, because most kids' cartoons have songs, mm. um, or you know, musical sing-alongs, which I suspect might put adults off. Do you really want to admit to your mates that you've been watching a song with a, a movie <laughs> with a sing-along? The, the no I want mo- moments, no happy village, huh. no, no sm- love story. No Smurfs then. Yeah. And no villain. All right. movie basics. Hmm, no villain. I'm just no trying to think of Pixar. Um, is Toy, Toy Story's Pixar, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Isn't there a villain, always a villain in Toy There's Story? no strong villain. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Just conundrums, problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. problems. Yeah, so... Interest. There is the evil child, though, isn't there? Yeah, I think so, but no, not really not in, the, exactly a in the movie villain. villain way. Yeah, right. And it's really interest, interesting. What Pixar did is they looked at all the movies that were being produced around them, mm. and they thought, how do we want to make movies, and how do we want to make them different? And the, the catch-22 of this is that Disney was an um, early investor in mm. Pixar. Mm. And so for one of the movies, Pixar was struggling with, them, with it, and they were struggling to kind of get it off the ground. And so Disney sent in, you know, one of the animation directors, and basically he said, look, every movie needs songs, they need an I want moment, you need to have a happy village, you need a love story, and you need a villain. Yeah. And so (laughs) the exact opposite of everything that they were looking at. And it's really interesting. There's a lot of internal friction. The Pixar team said, no, this is the way we make movies, and this is the way we make them successful. Mm. And they managed to kind of get through that and then keep on cranking out movies. Yeah. So And then, therefore, Pixar became... The thing that other people compared themselves to, yeah, exactly. and, and and ended up down yeah. that spiral. Themselves. Yeah, well, Pixar has just gone from strength to strength. Yeah, and so much that actually Disney went and bought them out to replace their animation division. Right, because every time Pixar was um, building a movie, other studios would hear about it yeah. and then try and replicate it. So you often see like, oh, there's a penguin kind of movie, or there's an yeah. Ice Age kind of movie, and. Once the rumours were around, other studios would rush to take that concept and yeah. get to market quicker. Yeah. And so Disney said, oh, no, nah, we'll just kind of buy you guys and bring you in-house. Yeah. It's so what do you call it? Internal? Internal scorecard. Internal so it's scorecard. just a really quick list saying these are kind of the rules I operate by, like willing to do this, not willing to do that. Yeah. Um, just the same as these guys. They produce movies. They're saying no songs, no I want moments, no happy village, no love story, no villain. Great. Everything else open. Very, very cool. Internal yeah. scorecard. Make one today. Thank you very much, Ben. Cheers. At BWAGY.com.